I am so excited to show you this recipe. It's an unusual way to cook a pork chop. Pork chop Milanese. Very exciting, very simple, full of flavor. Let me show you how to make it. I come armed to do culinary battle. I have with me a mallet. As you can see, this mallet is multi-phase, but we'll use this, the smooth one. What for? We are going to make pork chop alla milanese. Bone-in pork chop alla milanese. But before we can bring it to alla milanese style, we have to pound it. Now, the reason why I love this recipe is because it's an excellent way to cook pork chop completely different and still maintain beautifully moist and give it this milanese finish to it. Let me show you how to do it. Hey, come for the recipe. Stay for the story. What we have in here is a beautiful pork chop. Look how big and fat she is. On top of the pork chop and on the bottom of the pork chop, we're going to put some parchment paper. Then we start pounding on it using the smooth side of our mallet. Now, every time you take a hit, think of this. You want to hit and move away. This way, you maintain a directional flow on how far you want to push the pork chop. Now, I'm gonna lift up and look at it. Now, one of the reasons why we use the paper is because, as you can see, the paper is breaking, but the meat is remaining perfectly well. Now, what I noticed is that we could pound it a little bit more here. We could pound it a little bit more here. That's exactly what we're going to do. From time to time, people ask me, why don't I use this? Well, I'm gonna give you an answer. If you hate a pork chop, you pound it with this tenderizer. You pound it with this tenderizer, you will kill the pork chop. Why? It shreds it, it rips it apart. So let's go back to the pounding. Remember this, unless you hate what you're pounding, don't use this. This is more of a meat tenderizer. Now I lift it. Make sure that it's even on both sides. Look what a beautiful, beautiful flow. In here, I still see that it's kind of thick. Why am I paying so much attention? Why am I looking at all? Because I want it for most of the pork chop to have the same thickness. So in here, I'm gonna pound it a little bit more. We have pounded this pork chop to perfection. Now we have to do the Milanese coating. How do you do that? Let me show you. What we have in here is a mixture of egg and cream. You can also use milk. I like to use cream because it's much richer. Make sure that when you put the pork chop in, you let it so that the cream and the egg mixture cover both sides of it. Now we go straight into the breadcrumbs, and here they are. You lift it. Now, here's a technique that I particularly like. I like to spoon a little bit of the breadcrumbs on top of the pork chop, and then using my fork and holding it really strong, I push it really hard into it. And this does two things. Not only make sure that they adhere to it, because you wanna make sure that you have a nice covering that's even all the way through, but it also creates a nice, interesting pattern for you, as you can see. Does this design matter at all in terms of the flavor? None whatsoever but it's just beautiful to do it. You lift it. Make sure that you coat the side as much as possible so that it has this beautiful uniform look. You go to the other side. And you do the same thing. Using the fork, push down, and make sure that the breadcrumbs stick perfectly. You notice that I put no salt and no pepper on top of the pork chop before I pound it and before I marinated it. The Italian style breadcrumbs, even the one that you make according to my recipe or the one that you buy at the store, have an enormous amount of salt and pepper and flavor and spices into it. So I do not want to do too much. This is completely coated with the best of all possible flavors. The pork chop is ready. Now I'm gonna put it on the plate and then I'll show you exactly how to fry it attentively. We have the oil in the pan really, really hot. I have cooked it on very high heat. Now, we are going to add the pork chop. Watch this technique because it's very important. 
I hold it by the bone. I start from this point and then I go down all the way down to this point. Why do I do it this way? More often than not, when I'm in a rush to cook, if something slips out of your hand and it splashes out, it splashes away from you. Now, once you put this in, reduce it down to medium. I find that whenever I fry something in a pan, whenever I saute or I cook something in the pan, if I keep the oil to a very high heat, it actually burns. And what we want to do, yes, we do want it to brown the uh, pork chop alla milanese for us, but we do not want it to blacken it. So medium, we have a gentle way in which the meat, which we now are pounding to just about a half an inch thick, will cook gently into the oil. The pork chop has cooked perfectly on one side. Now it's time for us to turn it. Watch the technique that I use. I take the bone, move it away. I use the bone as the handle. Now here we go to the other side. And look how pretty she is. Do you remember before when I was breading the pork chop and I was showing you with a fork how to press the breadcrumbs on top of it? One of the biggest mistakes that more often people do is they don't press the crumbs with the eggs too well on the outside. So what happens is that the crust breaks, the oil penetrates and makes it very, very oily. This way it creates like a crust. This crust is full of flavor and that ultimately it will give us the most effective Milanese you've ever seen. One more bit of information. You will notice that because of the way in which it is, usually the oil doesn't make it all the way up to the bone. So I have a little trick to show you. Watch what I do. Slightly tilt it over. The oil is so hot that on contact, it will seal the bone and everything around it. Oh, she's ready. The pork chop, it's perfectly cooked. I've turned off the heat and now we're ready to plate it. This is the first move in the plating. What I like to do then is to take a wonderful tomato salad and put it on one side, right here. Then on the other side, put a little bit of Maureen's farro. Maureen's will only know what a beautiful picture I'm painting with the recipe. And then just a little bit of arugula salad that I dress with just a little bit of salt, extra virgin olive oil, and lemon juice. What a beautiful combination of great Italian-style salad and a pork chop alla milanese. In this, ladies and gentlemen, this is how you make pork chop alla milanese. This is a book the likes of which you've never seen before. This is a book that by magic takes you to the most beautiful places of your memory. The moments you spent with your family when you were young. Those moments that were full of joy, happiness, and the food that came with it. This is a book that talks back to you and guides you through each step of the making of the recipe. This is a book that takes you through a journey, through a video, showing you every step of everything that needs to be made to create the wonderful food that you once remember having around the table with your family. You will hear their voices. You will see their faces. Once again, this is a book that's like a portal. A portal that takes us to a place where only joyous memory of everything that's beautiful about life lives. This is a book full of stories and recipes and life. The best part of life. Hey, come for the recipe. Stay for the story.